Good morning guys. Today we're going to be talking about a passage from Macbeth. This passage is really important. It's from Act 1, Scene 5, and it sort of shows us what Lady Macbeth is thinking. She's talking to herself here. This is a soliloquy. She's not, it's not an aside to the audience or anything like that. This is sort of an insight into what she's thinking about the plot her and her husband have made to commit regicide and kill the king. Let me read the passage first. Glamis thou art, and Cawdor, and shall be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature? Is it too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way? Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst strongly win. Thou'st have great Glamis that which cries, thus thou must do, if thou have it and that which rather thou dost fear to do than wishes should be undone. Hide thee hither that I may pour my spirits in thine ear and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. There's a number of really important things in this passage that show us the role that Lady Macbeth plays in her husband's downfall and the uh, essential failure of their plan to seize the crown. Um, one of the first things we can see is that she holds no illusions about the kind of person Macbeth is. Here she says, Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. And what she's saying here is that Macbeth is too soft, that he doesn't have what is necessary to carry out this plan of murder and regicide. Um, you can see that I've highlighted it here. Um, she also says that he is without the illness that should attend ambition. And what she means by this is that he doesn't have the evil qualities needed to carry out a plan like this. And Lady Macbeth here, and in another passage, just on the other page, a couple of scenes, a couple of lines later, um, explores the ways in which she can use her power in their relationship to encourage Macbeth to carry out this plan. Um, linguistically, there's a number of interesting things at play in this passage as well. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false and yet wouldst wrongly win. Uh, we can see this really repeated hard sounds with the T sound and the W sound, this kind of cacophony of really tough and hard sounds coming out of this speech, which sort of highlight how Lady Macbeth is feeling. She's feeling tough, she's feeling strong, she's feeling motivated to seize the crown for her and Macbeth. Um, here we can see Lady Macbeth planning. She says, hide thee hither, come here quickly, Macbeth. He's on his way back uh, from the battles with the king. Uh, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear. She wants to influence him. She wants to speak to him and make it, and uh, bend his will and encourage him to do what he has to do and kill the king. In the next line we can see she plans to chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round. The golden round is obviously the crown. Um, but what's really interesting in those couple of lines is the use of the word uh, valour. Valour is, is a word associated with uh, military, military greatness and military bravery and a kind of almost righteousness in a sense. Um, you can see that Lady Macbeth really thinks that she deserves the crown and that she deserves to have this plan realised and she will do anything in her power to let it happen. Um, it's a really interesting soliloquy in a number of ways because it shows just how committed Lady Macbeth is to carrying out this plan. Um, she says at the very end, with which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. So she's absolutely bought the line of the three witches um, and she hasn't sort of understood the, uh, the dual nature of their commentary, how, how it offers both good and bad things. She's taken it at face value and seems to have assumed that Macbeth is, is, is essentially king already. Um, so we begin to see in this passage Lady Macbeth's arrogance, Lady Macbeth's commitment, and Lady Macbeth's role in the downfall of Macbeth.